Welcome back to another episode of JK Cooking. No! <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Casey. This is an episode. <laughs> hey, what's up guys? My name is Casey. Today we are making kimchi fanzan. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with JK. My name is Casey and today we are making kimchi fried rice. Yes, I got it. Ha! Congratulations. All right, so first things first, ingredient list. Kimchi is first because it's kimchi fried rice. Duh. Then we have spam. I choose spam because one, fried rice in general is pretty, uh, supposed to be fast and easy, so I don't want to actually have to cook real meat. So I'm gonna pick the worst meat substitute possible, Spam, which is very delicious. Spam is actually from World War II. They made it in 1937 to actually feed the troops, American troops. For some reason though, Asians love it, and Asians, only Asian households have Spam now. Can have fried rice without eggs. Um, got some green onions already pre-chopped. Um, got an onion that I need to chop. Got some ginger I need to smack down. And then we got garlic. I got pre-packaged garlic because I'm fancy like that. Um, good old fashioned rice, steamed rice. Some oyster sauce, some sesame oil, and some nori, seaweed strips. Oh, and then uh, salt and pepper. But pepper-wise, I'm using white pepper today. Salt. I think that's it, I covered my bases. The reason why I chose this dish is because I like making it. Uh, okay, so it's one of my favorite dishes I make because it's easy and fast. And also, out of all the things I make, I think Tiff actually likes the kimchi fried rice the best. Funny thing is she doesn't like onion, she hates onion with a passion. But, I put an onion in here anyways and she doesn't know it, you know why? Because kimchi, stir fried with some onions in there with all the uh, flavors mixed together, she can't even tell that it's onion in there, so I get away with it. <clears throat> it's the only dish I can get away with it, actually. Everything else, she's like, is there onion in here? Like, fuck. And she won't eat it, so hopefully she doesn't watch this video. <laughs> so I discovered this dish actually not too long ago. I think it was probably like five years ago. I think I was eating Korean barbecue or something at a Korean restaurant. I uh, ordered uh, fried rice and it was kimchi fried rice and I was like, oh, this is really bomb. But they didn't use spam, they used like pork belly and stuff like that. But the tip, I mean, the usual suspects are here though. It's kimchi and then the nori. They always top it off nori. They sometimes top it off with sesame seeds. I've seen in some places even put a fried egg on top afterwards. We're not gonna do that. But, um, but yeah, I don't know, it's a pretty common thing to find now, I think. And I thought, this is an easy dish to make. I think I shall invent my own version of it, and so I did. I don't know, I enjoy cooking because I always forever will consider myself an artist before anything else. Like, I'm not very good with business, I'm not very good with it. Just about anything else in the world, I'm not very good, but I like creating. And that could be from drawing, to making videos, to photography. And another art form I really enjoy is cooking. Onion time. So my knife skills aren't that great. It's it's a dream of mine to to be able to go like like that real fast and safely and not chop off chop off my fingers. But sadly, I'm not brave enough to even try that yet. And so I chop hella slow. I don't know when I learned how to cook because I think it's kind of like directing. The way directing works, it's like uh, you won't ever know if you're a good director for movies or for videos sake, uh, until you actually do it, right? But in order to do that, you need to find actors, you need to have a script, you need to have, you know, just about everything in line for the director to be able to direct. And so, growing up, I was watching my mom, and I would watch a lot of cooking shows, because my mom would always have it on too, and then, I'm an inner fat kid, and so, I was fat when I was a kid, I loved eating, and so even when we went out to go eat, I really enjoyed a lot of the stuff that adults were enjoying, even as a kid. Like I started eating sushi when I was like six or seven, like Isaac's age. Everyone was telling me, like my parents, and my uncles, and my family was telling me, your palate's very mature for my age. And I was like, I guess so, I don't know, it just it tastes good to me. And I just ate about anything that came to me. And so because of that, I, I took a lot of notes uh, mental notes from cooking shows and watching my mom cook and I, I guess I already had the knowledge But I never actually implemented it until College and that's when I first attempted cooking and I wasn't great at it at, in the beginning But it was fun. That was the immediate thing I took out of it was that it was really fun And I really enjoyed doing it and I don't mind doing it all the time. And so yeah, that's that's how I ended up cooking
This is totally not the right way to chop. I've been lately. I've been watching a lot of chopping or or, or cutting videos, and yeah, this is definitely not how chefs chop their onions. All right. So earlier I mentioned uh, I needed to smack the crap out of this garlic or oh, ginger and garlic. And I'll tell you. I, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing about stir frying, well, at least Chinese, the Chinese way. These two ingredients right here, garlic and ginger, are probably the two most important things we'll ever have to use. And the way we use it, at least when you when you start off the, the cooking process, you wanna sweat it. And so in order to sweat it, you wanna kind of burst it open and let the fibers all expose. So this is what I'm gonna do. Oh, that was a lot messier than I thought it was gonna be. But you see how it bursts open and you can the, all the fibers in the middle are exposed now? That's what you want. Two, two pieces of ginger, burst it open, and garlic. Much easier. All right, and I'm gonna dump this into the same bowl as the onions. These are my aromatics. So here we go. This is the holy trinity of kimchi fried rice. Now to prep the two main stars of the dish. Oh, it probably, it probably sounded like tuna cans. My cats are going crazy over Spam. They, I don't even feed them Spam, but they think it's tuna probably. What's the best way to cut this? Alright, so what you want to do is cut it into cubes, because with fried rice, the, the golden rule about fried rice is everything needs to be tiny and bite-sized. So we're gonna make it as uniform as possible to my ability of chopping. Because basically you don't want someone to bite into a bigger piece of spam than the previous bite. Everything needs to be consistent. Which, to the looks of this, isn't that consistent, but I'm just gonna say it is. Only with families it's easy to chop through. I was just asked the question if cooking has benefited me in any er other area of my life. And I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right, kimchi time. Mm. All right, so what I'm doing here now is I'm taking kimchi and I'm gonna create it into bite-sized pieces. I'm trying to make it like little tiny bites so to make it all even for whoever's eating it. All right, all right. Last ingredient that we need to prep is the egg. We'll use two. All right, egg. Very essential for fried rice. And I'm gonna whisk it up real quick. I'm not gonna whisk it up too well because I really like that swirly effect of the yolk and the white. So I'm just gonna keep it pretty coarse. All right, first things first, I wanna make the egg. We're gonna cook the egg first. That's just a simple scramble, nothing too fancy. This is our egg, and uh, that will sit off to the side. All right, so the next thing we're doing is the aromatics. I'm gonna save the onion for later. We're gonna do the garlic and uh, ginger first. And we're just gonna sweat the crap out of them. All right, here we go. So we're not, we're not gonna be keeping any of this. We're gonna empty out the wok right after I sweat the crap out of this garlic and ginger. Oh, it smells good already. You just wanna brown it, you don't wanna burn it. So once the garlic starts burning, it's gonna create a different kind of flavor than what you want it to be. So now we're gonna dump out the garlic and ginger. All right, so next, we have our oil here now. It's got garlic and ginger flavor all up in it. And now we're gonna toss the onions in it, complete our triple threat. So we got the onions in there and caramelizing. All right, so we got the rice right here. And uh, let's see how much rice we're gonna use. I don't know. So it's, it's also best to use uh, day old rice, which this isn't. I just made it like a couple hours ago. So, but it's, 
getting kind of hard. Like as long as it's not fresh rice, it's gonna be okay, I guess. Let's see how much rice do I want to make. Eh? A little more. Eh? Eh? A little more. Like that. I think that's good. You want to break the clumps up apart so each grain can be self-sustaining. My parents have actually not tasted a whole lot of my cooking because every time I go home or I see them or I'm with them, my mom's always the one cooking. So I never get to show off my, uh, my love for cooking for them. Except for recently, for New Year's, I, I made a prime rib. No, oh, yeah, I did make prime rib. I made prime rib for them. That was really fun. My dad and I tag teamed that. It was, it was actually really fun cooking with my dad. All right, so once you got all the rice breaking up apart and it's like loosened up, now you can add your egg back in. And you want to chop up the egg, break it apart. Again. You want everything to be diced. Now we're going to add our protein. Uh, I think we'll do half of what I had in here. Or a little bit more than half. And because the rice soaks up all the oil, you kind of want to, you want, you want to make sure you keep stirring. Hence stir frying. Or else it's going to burn. Alright. And the crown glory of this dish, kimchi, going in. Let's see how that, how far that takes us. So traditionally with stir fry, you want like really, really high heat. And there's really no way of replicating real stir fry at home because real stir fry and like in like the kitchen, and they have like this, like this. This fire would be like blasting straight up, like just hitting like a rocket on the bottom of uh, the wok. I mean, this is just lightly kissing the wok, so it's a big, a big, big difference. So because of the temperature difference, you cannot replicate that same flavor because that high heat intensity creates a grilled flavor. Like in, in Chinese, there's a term for it called wall hay, and you can't get that at home. But this will have to do, I suppose. That's looking pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to add some salt, nothing too much because it's Spam and the kimchi already has salt. Just going to put a little bit in there and then uh, some white pepper to give it a little bit more kick. I do prefer using black or white pepper over black pepper because I think white pepper actually is way more aromatic. I don't know why people even use black pepper. Black pepper, like you literally have to bite into the peppercorn and chew it to really get the full effect of black pepper. But since they grind up white pepper, I don't know why they don't grind up black pepper more fine, but white pepper is grinded up very, very fine. And so immediately you're going to able, be able to taste the full effect of white pepper when it enters your mouth. By default of that, I like using uh, white pepper way more. All right, add some, uh, some oyster sauce. The oyster sauce gives it that darkness that I want. Instead of using a soy sauce, I use oyster sauce. So it gives it a certain darkness. And also it creates a creaminess to it because it's a very thick sauce. And so it kind of gives it a, like a bit of a more of a creamy texture now. And then it's very sweet. It's a very sweet sauce because there's no sweet ingredient in here. I use the oyster sauce as my sweetener. And uh, some sesame. The very, very last step, I like to put some green onions in here for color and for crunch. So I'm not gonna cook this very long with the green onions. Oh, that white pepper, I think I put a little too much in it. It's all good. All right, turn off the heat. It is done. This is what we got. And uh, we're gonna plate it now. Here, and I cut it like that, and then, uh, yes, a big boo. This is the fun part. I don't know what I'm doing here. This is 
totally just last set, last minute, I was like, oh, I should do some of this. Makes it look nice. But I like green. Green makes it seem very pleasant and natural. Very nature tasting. Make it the titty. Isn't that the perfect nipple or what? And then we got some of this. This is what they usually use to top off kimchi fried rice. Oh, that's a lot. You kind of sprinkle it on top. It's a hairy nipple. we go! Hairy nipple fried rice. Alright, taste test. Ooh. That's it. You can taste hella white pepper, but you can taste the spam really adds, like you don't need to add too much salt, because the spam is going to be, every bite of spam that you get is going to be like sodium galore. I think it's bomb. Yeah, there you go. That's my uh, kimchi fried rice. Thanks for watching that episode of Cooking with JK. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, and uh, comment below if you guys end up making it and let me know how it turned out. Hopefully it turned out as great as, as it did for me, as, as for you. Um, da, da. Oh, last week's video, check it out over there. It's probably a previous uh, cooking video, or maybe not. Check out last week's video over there, over there, over there.